Hi everyone, today we will discuss A Chronicle of the Peacocks by Intisar Hussain. Hussain is using a narrative style very different from what we are familiar in Western tradition of separate linear stories. He attempts to create a new fictional form in Urdu by drawing upon Indian epics like Jataka stories and the Panchatantra where one story emerges from another. Reflecting a philosophy of life where everything in this world is interrelated. Hussein believes that we cannot understand the present or future without having a meaningful understanding of the past. In this narrative, he refers to Mahabharata to show the futility of war and the importance of universal harmony, brotherhood and secularism. Before we get into detailed study of the story, let's understand the author. Like Manto, Hussein is also someone who lived through partition. He was born in India but left his hometown and migrated to Pakistan in 1947. The Muslims who migrated to Pakistan were called Mohajas, a term originally applied to the migrants who had accompanied Prophet Muhammad. But very soon they were made to realize that they were unwanted outsiders and the term Mohajar itself came to sound like a derogative term. Indisar Hussain, being doubly disadvantaged as a Mohajir and a Shia in a predominantly Sunni land, could find no sort of a substitute for his lost home. In the story, A Chronicle of Peacocks, Hussain describes the pain of partition, exile and lost memories. The narrative begins, Allah alone knows why this evil spirit is after me. I am shocked and upset. I had actually gone there to inquire after the well-being of the peacocks. How was I to know that this evil spirit would grab hold of me? It's a very interesting beginning for a narrative. The mention of the evil spirit grabs your attention and then he begins the Monerama, Chronicle of the Peacocks. The immediate context is India's testing of the atom atomic bomb at Pokhran. Narrator points to the news article which talks about how India's testing of the atomic bomb has resulted in all the peacocks of Rajasthan flying away in fear. Hussein is pointing at the destruction of the natural world which is occurring as a consequence of the use of more and more sophisticated weapons of mass destruction in war. It is a fact that Environmental degradation as a consequence of man's greed for power is never given much significance. For the same reason, news about the peacocks is tucked away, as a small knot meets the more terrifying news about the explosion. Next, the narrator takes us to his previous encounter with peacocks when he visited Jaipur. They turn out in such great numbers that they are seen on every tree, rock and hill. They had a quiet dignity and a royal grace and a calm elegance, writes Hussain. This is, however, a picture from peaceful times. Post Pokhran, there are no peacocks to be seen anywhere. Hussain's technique of juxtaposing memory and the factual situation allows him to heighten the contrast in the situation. While his first vision of the peacocks was one of beauty and grace, the second vision is of a battered and bruised lonely peacock on a distant hill which rises into the sky screaming with terror when the author approaches him. There are no peacock songs to welcome him now. Despondent, terrified, dejected and bewildered, the peacock is the very picture of desolation. And this reminds him of another picture of desolation and there is a perspective shift to a more global context. A forlorn duck covered with foul effluence watching the waves in disbelief. The wary bird is a symbol of the horrors of war between the United States and Iraq. The two images become a powerful condemnation of all forms of violence. Peacock and duck is symbolic of innocent victims. Whenever there is a calamity caused by man's greed and actions, it is always the common man who suffers just like the duck and peacock. The suffering of these natural creatures for no fault of theirs is a reminder to us that we are not too far behind. While we destroy their habitat and their world, the needle of destruction is moving towards us at the same time. Journey is used as a metaphor in the narrative. We are constantly on the move along with the author 
traveling through worlds of past as well as present ages. Through his use of myths and legends, Hussein points out that despite having traveled through a long span of time for mankind, the situation today is not very different from the situation a few millenniums ago.